Hi, this video is going to be on a piece of decision mathematics um, about algorithms and specifically here we're going to study the bubble sort algorithm which is going to allow us to sort a list of numbers into ascending order. In terms of pencil and paper exercise, the bubble sort algorithm is actually quite straightforward. Three steps to it essentially. Step one, um, if there's only one number in the list, then we don't really need to do anything. We can stop straight away. Step two is really the key step, that we're going to work down a list of numbers comparing the numbers in consecutive pairs. So comparing numbers one and two in the list, and if one's bigger than two, swap over. Compare numbers two and three in the list, if number two is bigger than number three, and swap over, and so on and so on, and until we get to the top of the list. And step three, when we get to the end of the algorithms, really important that if we kind of pass through the list and we don't do any swaps, um, then we stop and we know the numbers are in order. OK, let's have a look how that works in practice. OK, really short example. We've got the numbers 10, 2, 7, 3 and 5, and we want to sort these numbers into ascending order using the bubble sort algorithm. So the very first thing we do is we look at the numbers 10 and 2. Now 10 is obviously bigger than 2, so we swap those pair of numbers over. And I'm just going to do arrows like that to indicate that I'm swapping them. So 2 goes there, 10 goes there, and then I'll just fill up the rest of the list. So from the algorithm, we compared numbers 1 and 2. Now we compare numbers 2 and 3. So we look at the 10 and the 7, and 10 is obviously bigger than 7. So I do my cross arrows to show what I'm doing. So 7 goes there, 10 goes there. We've swapped and just fill the list in. We carry on up the, up the list. Now we compare 10 and 3. 10 is obviously bigger than 3. So we swap them over. And just for completeness, I fill numbers in. And then, final thing, um, we compare numbers 4 and 5, and we can see quite clearly that 10 is bigger than 5, so we're going to swap that pair of numbers over. So it'd be 5 there, 10 there, 2, 7, and 3. And that's essentially what's called the first pass of the bubble sort algorithm. Um, we're always interested in the efficiency of algorithms, so at the end of each pass, I'm going to count up the number of comparisons and number of swaps. The comparisons are dead easy, I just look for my circles, and there's one, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to fill in there the fact that it's four comparisons. And in terms of swaps, I'm just going to look to see how many crosses I did to indicate a swap, and there's one there, one there, one there, one there. So in terms of this pass of this short list, there's four comparisons, um, four swaps. One thing also that you need to notice about the bubble sort algorithm is that at the end of each pass, the biggest number in the list has always bubbled to the top. So 10 was the biggest number in the list, and it started on the left-hand side, and you can see that it passed through the list, and it's now it's now bubbled to the top. OK, so that's the first pass of the bubble sort algorithm. Let's have a look at the second pass now. So now I'm on to the second pass of the bubble sort algorithm, um, and you'll notice that I've written the numbers down 2, 7, 3, 5, and 10. But the 10 circled, that's essentially because it was the biggest number in the original list. It's bubbled to the top, so we don't really need to do anything with it this time. We can just leave it there. Now if we work through the list, um, compare the first and second numbers. 2 and 7, 7 is bigger than 2, so we can just leave it untouched. And I'll just fill my list in. And then I compare numbers 2 and 3. Now, as before, 7 is bigger than 3, so my little cross to show I'm swapping them. 3 and 7. Fill the rest of my numbers in. Put the circles around the 10 to show we don't need to touch them. Um, I can, I've compared numbers 1 and 2, compared 2 and 3, 
I compare 3 and 4, and 7 is bigger than 5, so I can put my cross to swap them over. So it would be 5, 7, and just fill the rest of my list in. Now, um, so I've gone through what's called the second pass. As before, what I'm going to do is count up my comparisons. So just circling those. And this time I had three comparisons. So fill that in there. Um, two swaps, which are my crosses. So three comparisons, two swaps. And just like before, seven was the biggest number in the the remaining list and that's bubbled to the top again next to the 10. So in the, at the end of the second pass the order is 2, 3, 5, 7 and 10. Now at this stage it's absolutely essential that we do a final pass and I should explain why. Now after the first pass um, we had the numbers 2, 7, 3, 5 and 10 and 10 became fixed and I've just done the second pass okay and the order of numbers at the end of the second pass was 2, 3, 5, 7, 10 so 7 and 10 are fixed now to the human eye we look at those and they're in order so we may think we don't actually need to do anything but the key thing to remember is the bubble sort algorithm isn't really written for humans it's written for computers to work through this problem we're just simulating with pencil and paper so it's absolutely essential that I run the algorithm once more so if I do that I compare 2 and 3 3 is bigger than 2 I don't swap And then I compare 3 and 5. Uh, 5 is bigger than 3, so I don't swap. So I can just write those down again. And I've compared items 1 and 2, compared items 2 and 3. The 7 and the 10 were already fixed. So I've passed through the list without needing to make any swaps. So at this stage, I can stop the algorithm. But what I am going to do, as before, I'm going to be interested in efficiency. So I'm going to count up the fact that there was two comparisons, but there's no crosses, so no swaps. So we've um, bubble sorted the numbers into ascending order, and the final ascending order is obviously two, three, five. 7 and 10. And what I've done here is I've just done a quick summary of all the information that I got as we were running through this algorithm. So on the first pass there was four comparisons, four swaps. Second pass, three comparisons, two swaps. Third pass, two comparisons, but no swaps. And I've used the sigma notation here. Um, so all I'm saying at the bottom to summarise this algorithm, um, sigma c equals 9, there was 9 comparisons, sigma s equals 6, um, so there were 6 swaps. And it's very useful to kind of tabulate this information at the end of running an algorithm, because um, if you've been doing comparisons, looking at efficiency, and then this topic goes on to look at kind of the order of an algorithm, etc, etc. Okay, so what you might like to do at this stage is um, pause the video and have a go at this little task. Fairly straightforward, just like my example, five numbers, 34, 30, 25, 27 and 33. Um, you might like to have a go at bubble sourcing these numbers into ascending order and then compile a table at the end of the summary information showing um, the number of comparisons and swaps on each pass and at the end the total number of comparisons and the total number of swaps. Have a go, see how you get on. And finally, just to say, I hope you found this video tutorial on the bubble set algorithm useful. If there's ever any questions, please don't ever hesitate to get in touch. Thank you very much.